your arm. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? Okay, so me and me and uh, me and Zyla went to hang out with Mark today, and what Mark was up to was he was going to Elections Canada. Yeah, get a copy of a letter from Election Elections Canada, and. You guys hung out in the car for a half an hour because you didn't want to come out and talk to the cops. Yeah. They were actually very nice. Oh, yeah, they were they were being nice. I could see that they were just kind of scratching their heads. And oh. they were like, well, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> These people say something, this person says well, something. Well, I walked in, you know, bottom line is I walked in on Monday and had a nice conversation with a guy called Peter Walton of uh, Elections Canada. First, uh, you know, the first office opened in Vancouver and it was my constituency office. So I went in and he goes, oh, remember me? And he goes, oh yeah, I remember you. You had this, you know, and I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, he remembered me from the last election. And uh, he, I said, you know, I want to know whether I can run for office. It's a really black and white issue. I want it in writing. And he goes, oh, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, come back day after tomorrow. So the next day, I brought in a formal letter saying that I met him, that he gave me a three-day option. I like dealing through this man. He seems educated. And the function of the district uh, electoral officer is to be the liaison to get fast service. And I'm not shrugging this, I'll let him do his job. Okay? So today, they're supposed to give me a, a letter whether I'm running or allowed to run for office. Really basic. And I go in, and he's not in the office. Peter's not in the office. So I go, listen, if he's not in the office, tell him that I'll be press. you know, I've got to come back by 6 o'clock, and I'll be pressing criminal charges at that time. And they're like, oh, you know, and I left, okay? I came, I got a call about an hour later saying, come at 5 o'clock. Okay, so I showed up a bit after 5 o'clock. Peter comes out and he says, Elections Canada tells me that I'm not to talk to you. And you are to call, and they've sent you a letter explaining the situation. And I went, excuse me, uh, Show me this address that they sent it to because it's NFA. You know, the address is no fixed address. That's what I put on my application. There's legal reasons for that, okay? And they know I know the trick. <laughs> now, regardless, okay? The, so what happens is, is they, uh, he says, we are not giving you a letter. And I says, listen, I instructed you to give the letter under 336 of the Criminal Code of Canada. Criminal breach of fiduciary trust. Or also obstruction of justice, same charge, okay? It's 14 year indictment. And against a chief electoral officer, I mean business. And in the letter I said, the reason I want this in writing now is because I was being screwed. I got screwed last, last election, okay? I went out and got my 150 signatures to run for office, went in, did all this bullshit, and they went, oh, didn't you know we sent you this notice saying you can't run? And it was, I filed the Supreme Court papers, and uh, it ended up uh, where they, they buried the case because it would have meant annihilate, stopping the election, okay, because it was fraud on the chief electoral officer, which I was filing, black and white case, okay? And uh, at the time, uh, last, that's September of last year, of 2007, or 2008. No, I'm sorry, 2009. <laughs> was the last election. And I took flight to the United States and went with a full package that I filed in Supreme Court here against the Chief Electoral Officer of Canada and uh, went to the border seeking political, you know, what's called uh, safe passage to the United Nations. Since the United Nations is in the United States, anyone can walk up to the, to the border, and I walked up to the border saying, hi, 
I'm the party whip, the Marijuana Party of Canada. I have these actions that were blocked at the Supreme Court level in Canada, and I need to file these at the United Nations, and I need safe passage to the United Nations. And that got me in a uh, Northwest Detention Center, Tacoma, for 10 weeks without charges, without paperwork, without anything. And yeah, I spent 10 weeks in jail during the Obama uh, election, you know, the Obama-Bush, you know, the, the, the last election. And uh, both administrations, the, the Bush administration, the Obama administration refused because I, had, I was in jail during the transition. And both administrations got filed the paperwork. I, I, I created a stack of paperwork this thick on the fact that I wanted to file this uh, abortion of law that happened while the election writ was dropped where they denied me the right to run for office on fraud. Okay, it was an open and shut case of fraud. Now, in the notice that I just filed, that's a pretty detailed explanation, okay? Now, on the notice that I just filed, I mentioned that we need to carry on with the liability that was created at the last, and just give me a letter. Okay, all I need is a letter dated today with whatever's on saying, no, I can't run, and I'll just run with a variation of what I ran last time. So what do you mean by that, you'll, run, you'll just run with a variation of oh, what you ran? Okay. I'm filing against the Chief Electoral oh, like, Officer uh, oh, of Canada. You'll, you'll, you'll just fraud. Keep some charges. Fraud. Yeah, that's fraud. what you mean. Okay. <laughs> the charge is fraud. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You'll they, just go okay. back to that. No, no, no. See, I don't have a person in law. Okay. In law, I don't have what's called a person. I have a birth statement, and it. I got the most screwed up birth registration, okay? I don't hold a birth certificate. I don't have a person in law, okay? And I knew this when I came back to Canada 12 years ago. I knew I didn't have, I was his status. So what I did was I went and bought a person, okay? I bought a person from the city of Vancouver by running for council. And I never cashed the $100 check. So I own a person under the Elections Act of City Hall. And then I went and bought a person under the Elections Act of Canada. So I own a person, you know, like a capital, you know, all in capitals, but under the Elections Act, okay? Now that was strategic since I don't own a person that's subject to the Criminal Code of Canada because I don't have a birth certificate. Yeah. I have a birth statement. Okay, I but I wasn't relinquishing these rights. I was I went out and bought a person under the Elections Act, and I bought uh, under two administrations, civil and federal. And when they charge me, they always charge me as Mark Boyer from the Marijuana Party of Canada. So they have to be charging that person, you know, that capital person, mm -hmm. who is in Parliament now. That's a very legal That works point. differently. Oh, that's a totally different person. <laughs> yeah. You know, they have to treat me differently in law.